enlarge in screenshot mode, Doom VFR looks a lot like normal Doom. The first time I ever tested a modern VR headset, I played Doom. My 2013 PAX West demo came courtesy of Oculus executive Brendan Ereeb, who put a duct-taped, unfinished VR headset over my eyes before booting a modified version of Doom 3. Almost instantly, I praised the immersion. I ewed and awed at my ability to rapidly turn my head to line up demon killing buckshot. I appreciated the lighting and perspective tricks used to convey how much chaos was going on all around me. There really was nothing like it at the time. Oculus continued demonstrating this build of Doom 3 at other events to drum up excitement for its eventual headset, a fact not lost on the folks who happened to own the Doom license. The ensuing legal battle between Bethesda and Oculus has been legendary, but no lawsuit could wipe away that intrinsic link created between Doom and VR by this formative demo. That's a lot of baggage for a long-awaited video game to hang on to, but finally, the world has its first official, full-blown Doom VR game. You can probably guess what the F stands for in its official name, Doom VFR. And yet, it lands not with a heavy metal rip enter, but with a perfectly reasonable shotgun blast. Doom VFR is totally fine at best if you get to play it on PC with the full HTC Vive VR kit. On that platform, the game's satisfying Doom 2016 elements collide with underwhelming VR optimizations and a wimpy runtime of a few hours. Sadly, the game has also been shoehorned onto PlayStation VR, and the results there are almost impossible to recommend. Teleport to hell how Doom VFR looks in action on PSVR, including an always-on UI for health, weapon info, and more. Once you weaken an enemy enough, it will glow, just like in last year's 2D game. Teleport into the demon at that point to glory kill it for a health boost. PSVR image. Unfortunately, during the heat of combat, it's easy to lose track of that health and immobar info, owing to its spot in the corner and utter lack of peripheral hint that, like, say, a changing or flashing color. It's usually a surprise when you die. PSVR image. The scale of Doom's scariest baddies really impresses in the heat of a good gunfight. HTC Vive image. The last two images here are definitely sweetened compared to how the game looks in a downscaled VR headset. This captures the spirit of Doom VFR, but even our 1080T testing rig couldn't get the resolution and effects up to that level. Doom VFR is similar to the 2016 Doom reboot in that players are dropped onto a demon overrun military outpost on Mars before eventually descending into hell. You control a different soldier one year later, and he audibly ambles about various people and objectives as an obnoxious narrator. This Doom VFR aspect is a disappointment compared to the F the plot attitude of Doom Guy in last year's version, but he's easy enough to ignore. All you need to know demons are bad. You have guns. Time to kill. VR shooters are a different breed from their standard, flat-screen siblings, of course. The constant running, jumping, and spinning you might do with a mouse or a joystick doesn't necessarily translate to VR, whether because players don't have physical space to move around or because so much motion can make players feel woozy if they're not actually moving in real life. I would argue that this year's most successful VR adventure shooter game, the PSVR exclusive Fairpoint, pulls this off by combining a comfortable turn-and-move system with a clever always-run-forward level design philosophy. Doom VFR is a little more complicated. Its most action-filled moments revolve around battles within massive, multi-tiered arenas mostly brand new ones, not ported from the 2016 game where enemies swarm in every direction. Thus, you need to spin around and rapidly move to survive. If you play on the HTC Vive, you won't have a joystick, since its motion tracked wands don't have any. Instead, you'll rely on a mix of a teleport button and a dash button. The former lets you hold down a button, aim your left hand somewhere, and auto-warp to that point, so long as your pointing arrow is green when you let go. You can ascend to high platforms or descend to depths and downstairs with the teleport. The dash button, on the other hand, only works on the same altitude you're already on, and it insta-warps you a few feet in whatever direction you tap. Both of these maneuvers require pressing the Vive Wands giant touchpad, by the way, and if you press the wrong spot on the pad, you will insta-dash instead of prepping a teleportation. This is weird, because the teleportation move requires holding the pad down YDID and TID software allow this to work with your thumb on any point of the touchpad. This may seem like a silly distinction, but when you're in the heat of a crazy battle and cannot manage your teleports properly all because of a badly coded system, the rage builds quickly, and for the wrong reasons. Other than that annoyance, however, warping and blasting around in one of Doom VFR's arenas can be quite satisfying. 
Rather than try to make this a balanced blaster of a game, id Software opts to crank up the game's powers and its dangers simultaneously. Your hero starts out wielding a crap ton of weapons and ammo, along with a freeze nearby foe's move and a hearty amount of slowdown control when aiming and teleporting around. To compensate for this possibly being too powerful, Doom VFR's battles dump insane, powerful bad guy after insane, powerful bad guy into your field of view. Plus, the glory kill mechanic returns from last year's game, though now in VR, you simply teleport directly into an enemy's body when it has been weakened. Do this, and its body explodes around you in bloody gibbs. Unfortunately, these insta-splode attacks animate weirdly and feel a lot less satisfying than the similar melee toe finish maneuvers in the 2016 version. Still, the glory kill move offers a nice get health incentive to teleport into madness, and the game ultimately delivers a harrowing and exciting series of battles, for as long as they last. Doom VFR tops out at roughly 4 hours, and half of that time is padded with crushingly boring run around your home base time filler tasks between the big battles. These require teleporting around until you warp to exact spots to trigger levers and item grabs, and it's among the most obnoxious FPS stuff I've encountered in ages. I would have much rather the game filled that time with more opportunities to blast the game's hearty cast of insane demons. Pretty much every Doom 2016 baddie returns here, and their variety of lurches, dashes, wall crawls, and ranged attacks is better than any VR blasting game. Page 2 This is the PlayStation Move control scheme. Notice how the dashes are mapped on the left wand. That's impossible to mentally retain while in the middle of the action. If you don't have a joystick-enabled controller, yeah you'll have to teleport around, just like on the HTC Vive. Notice that camera tracking bar at the top of the screen. That's only on PSVR. Since the controls don't include any granular angle learning controls, yeah I will be pushing the camera's limits a lot. That, by the way, is the best way to play Doom VFR on an HTC Vive, with enough room to spin and sidestep as you line up shots and find your best teleportation spots. Enterprising gamers have reported already getting the game to work with Oculus Touch. While the game ships with the minimum graphics card recommendation of an NVIDIA GTX 1070, the game's engine scales down enough for a 970 to mostly piss muster. Your other option as of press time is to play the game on PlayStation VR. Do not do this. Should you ignore my advice, yeah I will be able to play the game in one of two ways with PlayStation Move 1's effectively imitating the HTC Vive's hand-tracked control system, or with a joystick-enabled controller either a DualShock 4 or a rifle-shaped PlayStation AIM controller, which shipped with Fairpoint. Playing the game with Move 1's, sadly, is impossible, id Software failed to include an effective turn 30 degrees or turn 45 degrees function for this control scheme. A spin 180 degrees button helps if the baddie lines up right behind you, but that's not how Doom VFR's levels are constructed. Yeah, will need to freely turn and move to survive its craziest fights, and PSVR's camera tracking system prevents players from turning as much as the game demands. As if to further mock PSVR players, Doom VFR includes a camera tracking meter at the top of your field of view, letting you know how close you are to getting out of sync at any given moment. Id Software also placed dash controls on the move once, but they're assigned to the four little buttons on each diagonal corner. The problem is that they're mapped to forward, backward, left, and right dashes without corresponding to those literal directions. No amount of memorization or practice ever makes this directional disconnect work. It just plain sucks. You're better off using a joystick-equipped controller, which lets you use the joystick to turn in either 30-degree chunks or in a smoothed fashion. The latter is a one-way ticket to discomfort, yet the former doesn't employ any of the peripheral hiding tricks used by other, more comfortable controller action VR games namely, Fairpoint, Resident Evil 7, and Eagle Flight. Maybe you think of your VR comfort level as heightened compared to other folks, in which case, Doom VFR's more jarring joystick controls may not bother you one bit. But as AR's resident canary in the VR coal mine, I can safely say that id Software has not lived up to the comfort level found in those other, listed games. Worse, there's the issue of Doom VFR feeling a lot more boring once you play it with a joystick. Teleporting around, and using those teleports as a glory kill finisher, adds a superhuman demon-killing feeling to the proceedings, and it emphasizes the speed and violence that made the Doom 2016 game stand out as a high-speed gorefest. If you play the game using a joystick, on the other hand, it just feels like a slow, ho-hum FPS of old, since joystick movement speed is intentionally slowed down for comfort's sake.
There's also the matter of the PSVR version looking fuzzy and ugly compared to its PC sibling, which makes some sense considering the limited power of a PlayStation 4 console. Even so, the console versions downgrade ISNT enough to keep the game locked at a comfortable frame rate, which only hurts its nausea-related issues. As of press time, Doom VFR suffers from noticeable random moments of slowdown on PlayStation 4 Pro. We did not test on vanilla PlayStation 4 to confirm whether that weaker system has better or worse performance. So much potential, and yet, Doom VFR could be saved by its PC version being opened up to the mod community. The 3D engine pumps out fast, high-quality visuals the weapon and superpower variety is a blast to play with and the range of enemies makes its VR firefights incredibly engaging. But its software DID and T bother putting together a truly memorable series of VR blasting arenas, let alone ones that make the most of so much teleporting and slowdown moves. ID love to see series fans let loose on so much quality VR shooting potential. Until then, Doom VFR feels plotting at best and, in the case of the PSVR version, sickening at worst. The good everything cool about Doom 2016, its aesthetics, its enemy variety, its powerful weapons, lands in this VR update. In its best demon blasting moments, Doom VFR is tops for VR shooters. The bad levels are padded with boring traversal moments and some awkward demon blasting hallways. Even with unnecessary padding, Doom VFR clocks in at around 3 hours of content. HTC Vive control mapping is a little off, which turns its constant teleporting into a chore. The ugly the PlayStation VR version has problems from top to bottom. Don't even bother. Verdict if you have a room-scale VR system, try. Otherwise, avoid.